positivity, motivation, never settle for average. You know, we do it over here. I had a request from a viewer to talk about the attempted Donald Trump assassination. Now I talked about it on Fresh Out, so I'll speak about it a little bit over here. This is the thing, man. Donald Trump, the sheer mention of his name triggers people. Oh, Donald Trump, ah, he's a racist. He's, oh my God, I don't know. People can't even have a conversation with his name. And it's hilarious, man. It, it, these so-called intellectuals, college students, um, you know, working people, some of them, they just, they cannot stand to hear his name. And I don't know why, but um, this whole assassination situation, I feel was possibly by design, an inside job. And some of the comments people have said, Donald Trump set up his own assassination. Look, <laughs> oh man, for anybody out there who's a conspiracy person, I don't know, I wouldn't trust the best marksman to um, shoot my ear off. I wouldn't trust him. <laughs> I would not risk a potential dome shot to win an election. Listen to this guy, check it out, let me know. We noticed a guy crawling, arm, you know, bear crawling up the roof of the building beside us, 50, 50 feet away from us. So we're standing there, you know, we're pointing, we're pointing at the guy crawling up the roof. And he had a gun, right? He had a rifle. A rifle. We could clearly see him with a rifle, absolutely. Um, we're pointing at him. The police are down there running around on the ground. We're like, hey man, there's a guy on the roof with a rifle. And the police were like, huh, what? You know, like, like they didn't know what was going on. You know, we're like, hey, right here on the roof. We can see him from right here. We see him, you know, he's, he's crawling. And next thing you know, I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, why is Trump still speaking? Why have they not pulled him off the stage? I'm standing there pointing at him for, you know, two or three minutes. Secret Service is looking at us from the top of the barn. I'm pointing at that roof, just standing there like this. And next thing you know, five shots ring out. So you're, you're almost certain that the shots came from that guy on the roof? A hundred percent, hundred percent. And he, he was up there for a couple of minutes. He was up you there. You were up there for a couple of minutes. Absolutely, at least three to four were, minutes. And you were telling yep. the police and the Secret Service? We were telling the police, we were pointing at him for the Secret Service who were looking at us from the top of the barn. They were looking at us the whole time when we were standing by that tree. Could they see Binoculars. Him? Could they see him? Probably not, because the roof, the way the, the slope went, he was behind where they could see. But, but why is there not Secret Service on all of these roofs here? I mean, this is not a big place. Did you see, I mean, obviously everyone, when the shooting started, everyone was very panicked. Did, oh, you, did you see what happened to him at all? Oh yeah, they blew his head off. Okay, sorry. Secret Service just, blew his head off. Okay, just be careful because we don't even quite know who's watching, but you, you're pretty sure they, they, they shot the guy. Absolutely, 100%. Okay. Okay. Yep. You, you saw that happen? Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. And did you see them go up to him afterwards or? They, yeah, they crawled up on the roof. They had their guns pointed at him, make sure he was dead. He was dead. And that was it. It was over. That's incredibly shocking. The guy was on the roof right there. You could see the white roof right there. Did you get a look at him? Could you? I, I no, other than he was in muted colors, tan type clothing. I, we saw the rifle flinging around as he was. Anybody that's been shot at or shot, you are not gonna trust somebody to shoot at you with a real gun and to not kill you. I've been shot at from roughly, you know, 20, 20, 30 feet. And, uh, It, it, it wasn't like I was trying to be Superman, but I wasn't screaming either. You know, people say, why do you pump his fist up? And this, you know, when the guy pulled the gun out on me, it was so quick because, you know, I thought we were going to chunk him. You know, I thought we were going to, you know, get a fade. 
and he pulled the gun out. It was so quick. My reaction was almost like the hand of God threw me on the ground. The bullets went past me. I thought I was dead, you know, to be honest with you, because I hit the ground so fast. You know, I kind of laid there for a minute to make sure I, I wasn't bleeding or anything. But people in the background got hit. And this was all over the news. I'm not like snitching on nobody. This guy did his time. He got arrested anyways. But uh, I got up, jumped in my car and, and burnt rubber, got up out of there. And uh, I didn't scream like a bitch. I wasn't like, oh, man, oh, you know, I just got up, got my car and smashed before, you know, I got uh, hit up for any questions. But, uh, you know, people are like, well, he staged it. He put his fist up. He asked for his shoes and shit. You know, you're not dead. You get up, you're like, damn, OK, where are my shoes at? You know, and um, you keep it pushing. But. The whole racial thing is what is one of the biggest triggers, especially in the black community. Donald Trump's a racist. Donald Trump's a racist. Man, prior to this man running for politics, when he was just doing his thing, when he was uh, being a businessman, nobody ever called him a racist. Not Mike Tyson, not any of the other professional boxers that boxed at his casinos, not any of the black caucus. Check it out, even Jesse Jackson. Uh, I now want to bring forth a friend who has, uh, well, he is deceptive in that his social style is of such. One can miss his seriousness and his commitment for their success is beyond argument. Uh, when we opened this Wall Street project and we talked about it, you gave us space at 40 Wall Street. Mm which was to make a statement about our having a presence there. Uh, and uh, beyond real. that, in terms of reaching out and being inclusive, he's done that too. Uh, and created for many people a comfort zone when I ran for the presidency uh, in 84 and 88. Just and just. And many others uh, thought it was either laughable or something to avoid. He came to our business meeting here in New York because he has this sense of the curious and a will to risk to make things better. And so aside from all of, of style uh, and his um, pizzazz, he's a serious person who is an effective builder of building for the build of people. Last year, he was a part of our workshop, of our panel workshop on what are the challenges and opportunities. And so this, a year later, Donald Trump, uh, for a few minutes, challenges and opportunities to embrace the underserved communities. Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. All the to HBCU. Well, it is an honor to be here. Oh, and, uh, I was with Jesse last year, and we had a lot of fun, and it was a little different. Jesse started off by saying, most of the wealth in this country is in the hands of a few. And I thought to myself, is that a bad thing? <laughs> That's, what's wrong with that, Jesse? But he did have an expression last year. And I loved, I was just telling Roger. He had an expression last year, the wall on wall must fall. And you haven't used it today, and I'm very disappointed in this, Jesse, because I thought it was a great expression. And I heard the expression about 14 times, and then he came to me at the end of the session, and he said, listen, I want some office space in your building on Wall Street, because the wall on wall will fall. <laughs> and I said, it's okay, Jesse, I'll make a good deal with you. I'll get you some space. You'll pay about $40 a foot. And he said, no, no, no. I don't want to pay 40. I said, how about 30? No. It was the cheapest deal I ever made in the history of 40 Wall Street. Is that right? <laughs> he got it for nothing. He was a very tough negotiator. We know that, right? Nah, he's a terrific guy. We love him, and I'm here for him. And the snow came, and I said, gee, nobody's going to show up, and look at this place. It's packed. Well, i just say a few words. I mean, Wall Street and New York City and this whole region is doing unbelievably well. Uh, I'm building a job on the west side, which is the largest job ever approved by the New York City Planning Commission. You see it going up along the west side highway. It's almost 10 million square feet. 
It's 18 buildings, and it's really going to be something. I will tell you, a large percentage of the people, and especially in construction, that are building these great jobs are black and minorities, and I'm very proud of it. We have uh, close to 25 percent, and I think the number's going up, and mm. they do a great job. There are no better builders than we have in New York, and a big percentage of that is black and minority folks. So I just want to thank everybody in the room for being here. I look forward to some questions. And then I don't know how we're ever going to leave this building today, because if you look outside, it is terrible. But we'll figure a way. There's always a way. And thank you. And thank you, Jesse. And congratulations. No. You want to know something very good? This is the matter of it. And you're talking about running the United States as a business. It was doing way better four years before this shit that's going on right now. I'll tell you that. And ask anybody how their pockets are now compared to what it was before and they'll tell you their pockets isn't the same it's a reality it doesn't matter if the, if it was a democrat right now in office you know if he was running it how he's supposed to and everybody was doing nobody would be complaining but the object of the game right now is to destroy to destroy and divide you know people always say oh big hurry you, you know you're always down on the black community you're always down on this look man I'm down on ignorance. It don't matter if you're black, white, or Hispanic, or Asian, or whatever. I tell you right now, the people that I was messing with in prison, even out of prison, were people who were on the same conscious time. You know, I'll tell you a story about racism. My celly was, was Mexican. Sacramento, the West Side. He, he was Mexican. Uh, four and a half years the blacks from LA used to look at me crazy why you sell up with that Mexican man why you sell up with that Mexican bro we don't get out like that Northern California Sacramento baby 916 white boy black Mexican Filipino Hawaiian bro we all brothers man we weren't on no racist shit we were about having each other's back so it wasn't about racism even though prison has a lot of racism but from down south, some of the brothers was, was giving me shit. Luckily, you know, I had my size on and I, I was about handling my business, so I didn't get into any situations. But if I'd have been a little dude, I seen them pack dudes out because they were black, intellectual, and they weren't street dudes. See, black culture is all about are you street or not? If you're not street, I'll beat your ass. Well, I'll beat your ass. And that's what it's about. Who has the fury? <laughs> if you have the fury, you can bring the thunder, they leave you alone. If you can't bring it, they will extort you or try to cause harm to you. And that goes for a lot of places where they feel they can extort you, whether you're a square businessman, you're a nerd, you're a nerd, we're gonna extort you. That's just they prey on the weak. So for all the racist shit, for all the people who want to say this and that, man, that's some punk ass shit, man. Because a lot of you guys don't even know what real racism is. Tell you another story. Uh, being in the USP, my my cell was down by the Southsiders. And I was one of the few blacks down there, single cell. And uh, I spent a lot of time in a law library. And... I had a mentor there that was uh, an older white guy. I had an older black guy mentor. And I was at the, I sat at the other's table because I wasn't gang banging or nothing in there. I was changing my life, man. I wasn't with the politics, you know, uh, and I avoided a lot of stuff. And, you know, certain dudes used to tell me, Big Hurt, today, stay off the yard. And I would stay off the yard. And these were LA dudes, some of them looking out for me. Because in USPs, it, you know, the dudes is, you know, on some, some high power time. They like, hey, Big Herc, you know, I see you doing your thing, man. You know, um, props to you, man. But uh, I never had any problem with the Southsiders and in, 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 in the USPs, you know, you cannot socialize with the Hispanics at that level. You know, people, they trip, especially if you're kicking it with the Southsiders. But I used to have, you know, mild conversations in passing. Big hurt, man. You're cool, man. You know, you're a good dude, man. I just can't, I can't, I can't politic with you in here, man. I said, I understand. You know, if I, he said, if I would see, saw you on the street or meet you on the street, bro, you know, you, I could tell you could do good business. And, you know, good business means the plug. 
See, life is a plug. If you are trustworthy, you're not gonna rob, you're not gonna screw people over, people give you opportunities. And a lot of times what happens is people get opportunities and they burn the plug. Therefore, they lose their source of income and then they get mad and then they wanna go and just rob like a savage. And I've been a savage before, but having matured and looked at the bigger picture, I'm like, you gotta always think long-term. You think long-term, you realize there's greater opportunities rather than trying to say, hey, I'm gonna just debo somebody out of their shit. But I'm doing full circle on this because I'm just telling you about racism and how, you know, you can sit here and say, oh man, this man's racist. I just showed you the man, you know, prior to all this bullshit running for office with no racism. And I'm purely talking about economics when you look at a business perspective of how the country's being ran, how we have all this divide. And even when you talk about, well, there's people that follow him that don't like blacks, there's people in the black community that don't like black. They, she, murdering, shooting each other ops. I mean, they're ops up. They don't like black. But then they say, oh, you're racist, but they don't like black. Every, every song they listen to is talking about killing another black. They don't take care of their kids. They don't like black. <laughs> That's not my son. I ain't got no money for him. Four or five baby mamas. They don't like black. Oh, I don't need a man. This nigga, he ain't good for nothing. They don't like black. And I'm talking about black because that's what people, you know, seem to identify me with, even though I'm just a human being and I have to have this skin tone. I came out and, you know, cut a little sun and turned into this little, you know, brown complexion, dark brown complexion, but you know, it is what it is. So that's what I'm talking about. I can't speak on white because I'm not white. I can't speak on Mexican because I'm not Mexican, but I've had plenty of interactions with white and Mexican. I'll tell you another story. In prison, got a study group. White, Mexican, Belizean, Asian. You know, I'm, I'm hustling, not really working a job in there because uh, I want to spend my time studying and working on myself. I got some beat up ass shoes that I've had for a long time white guy in my group he uh surprises me on christmas with a pair of shoes bro that he bought from a guy because he was having a little bit of money in there and he gave them to me for christmas bro a white dude and before he purchased the shoes from another white guy in prison they told him you better not get his shoes to that that nick I know you, you hang out with him, man. These shoes better be for you. You better not, better not see him on his feet. But they saw him on my feet. And they tried to run up on him, and he faded him. In my honor. Gave me some shoes, the white guy. See, a lot of y'all stuck on the racism stuff, racism stuff and oh Trump this and that trigger. I'm talking about, I'm talking about the state of the, the trade. I'm talking about state of immigration. I'm talking about the state of the economy, inflation, just everything. Horrible crime, horrible. You got illegal gangs that were never here before running around on mopeds like they do in their home state and just tearing up shit. They all getting all the benefits. They getting all the benefits and y'all keep clapping because you got somebody talking about a reparation. Man, no goddamn reparations. They've been talking about that shit for how long? Every time they think you're fading, they bring in the reparations. But they don't need you no more. They're going to replace all you black ex-felons, all you uh, what they consider uh, useless feeders, eaters, non-contributors with illegals for the jobs. All the jobs you used to have in your community, they're going to these guys. And they're gonna give them housing, and they're gonna give them cell phones, and they're gonna give them medical. They're shitting on the black community. But yet you still go back and, oh, master, master, we, we know you gonna have mercy on us. Man, shit. And I'm talking about master could be the Dems or the Republicans because there's a lot of them who voted to keep the borders open. There's a lot of them who voted to pass a lot of legislation that's destroying American businesses, shut down businesses during COVID. And, and 
they had a lot of people lose their jobs because they didn't want to go along. They wanted to keep their jobs. You know, who, who, people who didn't who didn't go along, they got kicked out the military, everything else. So there's both sides that, that is dirty. They, we need a clean house all the way around the board. And it's no different than having a what so-called group and you got somebody in there and you think because he looks like you, that's your people, but you don't really know him that well. You know, you come to find out maybe this guy's an undercover uh, pedo or maybe he has, he's a woman beater or maybe he's something that's just despicable and you gotta, you gotta clean up your house. Our politics right now need to be cleaned up and for people to think, oh man, they, if they should have, if they would have just got this guy, blah, 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 then what? That's what type of government you want? You want us like Mexico where they just assassinate everybody until they get to one person? You want us to be like uh, uh, so many people down like in El Salvador and Venezuela and, and, and Ecuador, some of these countries where they're just constantly trying to take out the opposition? You want a socialist society? Not me. I'm American, bro. We the people are pissed. I'm American, bro. I don't care if you're white. I don't care if you're Mexican. I don't care if you're Filipino. I roll with you. And if you want to build a business together, you want to build something together, I'm down. I'm not going to discriminate because you're not black. Oh, uh, I'm only going to do business with black. Let me tell you something about that, man. <laughs> you know how many black people have bought my products? Hardly any. You know, the first thing they ask me, oh, man, where'd you get that from? How much did it cost you? Oh, bro, okay, hook me up some swag. But you go to Full Locker and buy Nikes, you go buy MCM, you buy Gucci, you don't tell them how much they manufacture the bags for, where they got it from. You go to GNC, you buy your protein powder, your pre-workout. You don't ask them how much it costs, hook a brother up, you know, uh, oh man, you're coming out with a with a with a sports drink. Oh, bro, how'd you do that? Can you hook me up? You 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 asked and hooked me up, but you're not supporting. But you weren't thinking about doing any of this shit until I told you about it. And when I have my shoes, oh man, throw me a pair in. When I have my slides, I'll oh, hook a brother up with some slides. The other dude, hey, big Herc, let me buy a pair and sign them, bro. I'll I'll pay with top dollar. See, they always talk about buy black, but they're not buying black. There's no support. They don't support each other like the Jewish community, the Armenian community, the Russian community, the uh, uh, Catholic community, the Mormon community. They don't support. So you talk about all that stuff. That's why I don't even want to get into the racist stuff. There are racist people. No doubt. No doubt. I've had conversations. People hear me talk. Man, where are you from? The way you articulate yourself. Oh, man, you, you, your, your features. You look like you could be from Africa. <laughs> I've heard it all. I don't even, I just laugh at it because I conduct myself in a way where I know I'm a shine regardless. I can go kick it with my, my Mexican partners, go to a quinceanera, go kick it at a lowrider show, chop it up, talk talk about uh, 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 the, some hood shit, some graffiti, some break dancing with them, some old school stuff. I can go over here and kick it with the brothers, you know, kick and talk about whatever, you know, uh, old school rap. Um, growing up in, 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 in the 70s. I can talk about, I can go over here to white and talk about some white stuff. I can talk about anything. I don't even like to call it labels, but I can communicate with multiple cultures. My eight Filipino homies, my Vietnamese homies. But every time it comes down to something, everybody wants to say race, race, race. You know, it's disgusting, but it's just a reality. When you appear and people first see you, they're thrown off by appearance. And then when you say, hey, I'm an artist. Oh, hey, I'm a... Uh, uh, designer. Oh man, um, I'm a mentor. I'm a um, uh, a graphic artist, or I'm a car builder. They it, it just throws them off because of what they're used to seeing that person look like. And I've told you before when I did my books in prison, I had to pretend to be a white guy when I sent the books in and use a different surname, and then have the people come back and be like, "Oh man, let me order that book." But if I said I wrote it, it would have been discredited from the gate because I'm black by a black person and i've had the same black people oh man but they did everybody had a tragedy in life bro the the the, the irish you know tragedies the uh um the natives in in south america with the french tragedies um africans tragedies 
um, blacks over here, tragic. There's a lot, there's, every culture has experienced something, but it's about moving forward. And I don't know anything that this person did to me. So there's no reason for me to point the finger at them and blame them for what I'm living today. What I'm living today, a lot of it comes with choices I've made. Did I study enough in school? Did I hang out and smoke too much weed? Was I drinking alcohol when I should have been at work? Was I, there's a lot of things in, that you do that are a reflection of where you are today or where you, whatever your parents did that led to where you are today. And the only way you break that cycle is by you being a better person and teaching your kids better values so that they can win. You can't blame the old white guy way back. You can keep bringing pictures up, Lynch, all this stuff, but that guy, whoever he is, he's not the one holding you back. It's you holding yourself back. And if you talk about it, it is the white person, well, look, get five other people that look like you. Five other people, say, you know, in the black community and start a business. Put up $1,000 each, start a business. Can you find that? I can, I can, I see it in the uh, Mexican community. You know, they're they're the, the, the one of the greatest examples of entrepreneurs I've seen. Uh, taco stands, uh, um, what do you call it? Fruit stands, uh, stuffed animals, flowers. Um, I see them selling everything. Never see them begging for anything. I've never seen a Mexican out here begging for anything. I've seen them in L.A. They got generators. They got grills. They're hustling, bro hustling those aren't the ones coming over here tearing up shit those those mexicans who are here busted their ass they integrated into america they believe in the dream they're out here getting bread uh uh i seen some they get together they got their own auto body shop interior shop I, I, my interior guy him his brother his cousin his son bro they work together and I'm not saying blacks don't do it either, but what I'm saying is you talk all that shit about somebody you don't know holding you back, well, get your people together and just be independent. If you need to get somebody to front for you at the bank, go get you somebody of the right color and have them go in there and pretend to be the man and you guys run shit. Use your head, man. Quit crying. But it, it ain't it ain't Trump's fault. And people say, well, I, and I'm, I'm not, you talking about Biden, well, he's like, look, bro. I'm going to tell you real talk right now. We're, we're, we're seeing where, you, you know, people are crying about, oh, he's going to be an oligarch. No, people are scared. People are scared because of what is going to go down with cleaning up our politics, our government, both sides. You know how many, you know how much corruption and shit, man, we got going on? You know, Ukraine is a big money laundering situation. I mean, dude, come on. Hundreds of millions, but we, we haven't invested none of that over here? Come on, man. Fitting all crisis. I mean, young people, there's just literally right now, we've gotten who knows how many foreign terrorists coming into this country. You got people trying to raise these, you know, these flags that aren't American and they're disrespecting. Let me tell you something, man. Y'all think y'all got it so great and you talk all this shit, you know, America, this and that. Go to Egypt, go to Saudi Arabia, go to some of these other Middle Eastern countries that you think you're you're so behind and get over there and, and, and talk that shit. Talk that shit, man, and see what happens. Run up in one of their stores and steal, steal some shit. See, over here, you get a pass. Oh, man, the police beat me. You got a pass, bro. You Under 950 bucks. Go over there and steal some shit. They got stores in Japan. They don't even have to have uh, a person working a check register because they got an honor system. See, the thing is, you got a lot of people. They say they, they are looking for a better way, and there are a lot of people seeking to, to immigrate legally. Not illegally, but legally for a better way. But then you got a lot of people who are bringing the same bullshit. It's like somebody moving from one neighborhood they go to another neighborhood, it's square, and their parents are trying to do better for them, and then they start a gang in that neighborhood. Never been a gang problem. I'm out here right now in, in Arizona. You know, uh, Mormon neighborhood, Gilbert, you got the Gilbert goons. White kids trying to be goons. Really? Really? They're, they're, they want to be gangsters? You live in a million dollar home, $800,000 home? Man, look, 
We, we got a problem not with racism. We got a problem with communicating. We got a problem with opening up dialogue without breaking down, without being triggered, without getting emotional, without wanting to cause violence. You, you got guys right now, you call them, you know, anything outside of what they want to be called as far as in a conversation and they want to get a gun and shoot you. Oh man, they get, you know, you got kids getting mad over parking spots, over just stupid stuff and they just want to, they just kill and they like ready to throw their life away. What, what is going on with that? It ain't, it ain't racism that your kid's out 1.30 in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning when he's supposed to be getting in bed or getting ready for school. That has nothing to do with racism, a white guy or Mexican guy or Asian guy. But I talked about all this because of the assassination and somebody, you know, made, a, like I said, multiple comments about it being staged. Trump set it up. Oh, my God, they should have did this. And they're still like hell bent on what's going on. And if you really think the economy right now is great and you like the direction, I don't know what to tell you, bro. You, you, you I don't know what world you're living in. If you think what we have going on right now is benefiting America, it's destroying America. And that's what they want to do. They want to destroy it, man. They want to come over here and chop this shit up like they did Europe. They want to chop it up, bring in the, bring in the, in the, um, the Euro dollar over here, uh, they, yeah, they want to put us under their world uh, world government form. They want to, they want to just they want to destroy America. As long as you have people who believe in a commonality, then you can't really conquer. But you got to divide, whether it's through religion, whether it's through sex, whether it's through racial. That's what they got to do. I remember a guy telling me one day at a car show years ago when he was talking about all this stuff was going on with the George Floyd stuff. And he was saying when he was in Iran, they did the same thing with the different sects of the Muslim uh, community to divide. And basically it created a you know civil war there. And uh, as far as breaking up the, you know, separating the people and it was able to bring in a new government. And it's just now the way it's being ruled now compared to what it was in the seventies, it's night and day. It's like, if you look at Lebanon back in the day, and Libya back in the, you know, some of these places and how they bring in these different um, militant sects or religious sects, but they got to divide. It's in prison, same thing. You can't sit at this table. You can't talk to this guy. You can't do this. Oh, that guy's a Trumper. Oh, that guy, he's a liberal. Oh, this and that. You know, my thing is there's got to be something in the middle, but at the end of the day, I just want family values. I want no crime, family values to protect the kids. Why should a kid have to question you know what sex he is that's not even a conversation you have with a kid man go put your underoos on your aquaman or you know go play with your 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 radio control car or go fly a kite let's go fishing hey you know play with your little your little uh tea little teacup stuff little girl and you know just be kids it ain't about all this you know oh we got to make sure in the middle we have all this equity gen diversity what does that have to do with protecting the country if that's what you want to do and serve what is all this stuff man we're the laughing stock right now laughing stock your leader has to be a strong person your leader has to be strong and regardless somebody said oh we need a third party well anybody that's being backed everything's about money we all know that and we know that money corrupts and at this point we're at a point where if we don't change the course, there's not going to be anything left. If there were, if there were, is anybody else right now? And, and, you know, I look at like, they fast tracked what they got going on right now. They need another four years to just destroy us completely and bow us down, get rid of the middle class, have extreme rich and then working poor. It, which means not like literally you're making 150,000. You can't even buy, you're never going to buy a house. You're just going to rent. You will own nothing and be happy. Claus Schwab. That's what this, 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 this uh, weirdo is talking about. If we don't have somebody stand up, that's not a, that's not a, a sucker. That's not a punk. Somebody who can stand up and, and, and intimidate somebody because that's what it is. You got to be somebody who ain't, who ain't, who ain't easily intimidated. Somebody who's respected. You gotta be damn near a gangster. You, you ain't got a gangster in office right now. 
Yeah, yeah well, you do. You know, you, you got some of the biggest things going on right now. You know, it, it's and not, nothing's happening. So that's gangster, I guess. It's, it is gangster. But you, you know, when you start looking at look at look at something beyond your emotions. And I, I had a conversation with some other people on another social media platform, and I said, look at the history of even the standings of the person in office right now as far as the crime control bill uh locked up a lot of minorities as far as um uh policies in regards to integration of schools you know the choice of uh education um it's like dude <laughs> you you guys talk about racism but you don't even understand it and then you know you use that and then you you, you jump on one topic and you use that to be the, the sole reason why you back something, but you can't think for yourself. You just follow. You don't have any mental capacity to rationalize or to look at something outside of what somebody's told you or what your, your group has suggested. I don't know, man. Um, I just look at like I've dealt with a lot of people throughout my life as far as culture um, I, I'm, and before uh, politics, as far as uh, Donald Trump. I never seen him talk anything racist and people like, well, he had, you know, he had these apartment buildings. Look, man, I know regular people that got apartment buildings and it's like, dude, they, they charge a certain amount of rent. You know, it might not be the best condition, but it's housing. If you don't like it, you can move, you know? Yeah. You know, there's not, you know, sometimes it ain't perfect, but you, you talk about like, if you have property, you, you, it is what it is. You don't want people tearing your shit up. I mean, you got shit going on. You're a landlord. You know, I would love that I, I would have had a um, relative that left me a bunch of apartment buildings or real estate. It got me into the game at a younger age. It is what it is, though. I can't complain. I can't say because um, I'm not white. I, I'm not, you know, in a position where I, I should have been a real estate mogul or a businessman. And, you know, if you've ever done business and people say, well, he's lost, he's bankrupted. Look, bro, I've... I've I've lost money in a lot of investments, too. I've invested in clothing, apps. I've lost lots of money, tens of thousands of dollars, and sometimes as a, as a lesson. And, and it's no different than paying to go to college because in college, you haven't even put yourself in the marketplace. I put myself in the marketplace, and I've lost money on different things, and it's a life lesson. But it wasn't about racism. And one of the dudes that beat me was Indian. He, you know, once he got the last payment, he screwed me on my app. Done. 30,000 gone, you know? It's probably peanuts to a lot of people, but it happens. Car projects, I had a guy supposed to do some stuff, you know, got over it on me, scam artist. You know, it, it, it happens, man. You know, it, it's, it's not anything racial, it's just life and choices and business. But when you talk about this situation, going back to the Donald Trump, and you look at it, I look at it like, it, 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 you know, to me, it was a breakdown of security. You know, these people, they try, they try to throw every case they could at him, get him off the ballot. That didn't work. They tried to take all this man's wealth and property. That didn't work. Okay, let's defamate his character. Next thing left is take his life. He's not quitting. Get rid of him. And some people think that's cool. Nobody was saying that about Biden. Nobody was saying take all his property, take all his stuff. But it's okay to do it to one side, but it's not okay to do it to the other. Just look at the look at the balance in that. But you're like, yeah, that's right. That's not right. It's disgusting, man. That's what you call uh, a socialistic, basically communistic government. One-sided party. That, that means nobody else can say anything and everything you say is right. It's mobocracy. It's not a republic. Which we're not, we're not really a democracy. We're founded on a republic. You're talking about up, up, upholding democracy. Democracy is forcing change through uh, basically mob rule. It's not through voting. It's not through a, a electoral process. And yeah, you know, all of, all of the history we look at with the presidents who have been elected, most of them came from a certain family tree. But who's to say right now we're not dealing with something that's disrupting the balance? Because if it wasn't, why would they? Why would you care? If this man wasn't running for office, would he have any of this going on in his life? He'd be doing apprentice or whatever he'd be doing, running another you know business. If it was anybody else, anybody else 
that was already in the pocket, would you have 30 something cases? 34 felonies you convicted of. 34 felonies? Bro, you got a porn star convicting somebody that was giving up the cheeks for dollars? Getting blowed out in, 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 on film and, and gangbangs and stuff? <laughs> and you're using that as a weapon to destroy a man going for prison? Come on, man. Really? He set it up. He told him to shoot his ear off and put his fist in the air. America. Yeah, man, America, bro. I'm all for America, bro. Not the open borders. I, I'm not trying to have everybody run through here. I, I don't want people running up in my house, hurting my family. No, no, that's not what I'm about. And, you know, for you out there who talk about community resources and different things, do you see them invest in your communities? Do you see your schools getting funding like they're funding all these other foreign wars and, 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 and other uh, agendas? Are you winning in your community? Is, is your high school bringing back trades and skills that will allow you to compete in the future? Not everybody wants to go to college. <laughs> it, it, it just never ceases to amaze me, man. But a lot of people are going to say, Big Herc, you're not down with your people. You're racist, whatever. Hey, I, I really don't care. Call it what, it, what you want. I'm just saying, uh, you know, looking at everything in a whole, uh, you know, the... the, the the conversation and dialogue right now in America is so divided and you know they're really pushing for us to divide each other and a lot of people are falling for it I'm just trying to create conversation and at the end of the day this right here man this is like the last straw before the big power this is it this is what they you know this is what they this is what they were hoping for you know, they even said, oh, man, you know, we, they, they want to have something where they can justify locking us all down again. We're talking too much. It's open dialogue right now. Anyways, leave a comment, share the channel, bro. They they, they really muzzle me down over here. And like I said, I, I'm not trying to tell you politically how to vote. I'm just telling you it wouldn't matter as long as you're doing the right thing for the people and right now. The right thing is not being done. And this shit right here should not be going on in any country that prides itself on being an example for other nations and claiming to be a republic. Com ...to pick up a limited edition GTA poster signed by me for $10 or with your purchase of a Wig Splitter Porsche t-shirt, I'll throw in a free poster signed. Coming. I got to hurry up and wash my ass. Go to BigKirk916.com, pick you up a bar of soap, and wash your ass, or else you're going to be under arrest too. Oh, shit. What's up? Big Kirk 916 with Fresh Out Ministries. We're doing a new program where we're doing a takeover of a mom-pop cafe or restaurant, and we're doing a pay it forward. So we're going to offer free meals at this particular restaurant, or cafe mom pop for a certain amount of time and we are asking that you make a donation to pay it forward so that we can continue doing this program for other mom pop restaurants and cafes because we know that it's hard times out here you have a lot of people that talk to talk but they don't walk to walk and so we're actually walking the walk we've been doing it for over 11 years on social media we've been getting shadow banned we've been getting uh, demonetized so we want to give back, and this is our way of giving back to helping everybody through these trying times with this economy. You know, a lot of churches, they got hundred billions of dollars, and you don't see them out here helping the people who are in times of need, but they're still taking in the form of donations, but how is it helping the community? We want to build a community sense where we help each other, we can all overcome. You can't sit around, wait for somebody to save you. You got to save yourself. And this is the way you do it. So by us being able to do these takeovers with Fresh Shop Ministries, with the mom-pop restaurants and cafes, we want to build a film, talk to you guys, get your feedback on what's going on right now in society. Hopefully you guys find it in your heart to donate. This donation, which is a pay it forward, will allow us to do other mom-pops around the country eventually. But right now we're going to be in 
uh, Southern uh, California and Los Angeles, Orange County. So hey, reach out to your local businesses there. And if you are out of town in another area and you would like us to come there, if you provide the necessary means, we will come there also and do the same pay it forward. But right now, hey, if you're in lo locally in Los Angeles, Orange County, hit us up, freshoutseries at gmail.com. You can also make a donation on our link tree on our Instagram at Fresh Out Series. We look forward to seeing you guys.